sing with us tonight.
Well, Merry Christmas, Sycamore Creek Church. You can have a seat. We're so glad that you decided to join us tonight, and we're especially welcome and excited for our guests. So Christmas is a great time where you can bring your family and friends, and so we just want to give them a big welcome right now. Would you mind just giving them a hand for the guests that are here? We have a great service plan for you, but you know what? 2020 has been a really hard year. I think every one of you would agree with me on that. And at some level, you've gone through some kind of hardship this year, whether it's something awful like you've lost someone or you've lost your job or just even just missing seeing your family in these traditions. I mean, if you remember, we didn't have an Easter service. You know, I've worked here 21 years. First time we hadn't had an Easter service. So we're, we're just thankful to be here. But we're also very thankful for our technology. So all along the way, we've been able to bring church to you at home if you're just not comfortable coming out or you're, you're immune compromised. But we wanted to include those people tonight. So they're going to come on in a video and they're going to tell you Merry Christmas. Christmas from the Simonis family. We're going to stay home this year and watch Christmas Eve service in front of the fireplace with our family near. And we just wanted to give a quick shout out to the production team and all the volunteers that make that possible for us to do. Thank you. Merry Christmas and see, see you in 2021. 2021. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from, from the Weigel family to your family. We enjoy watching from home and we look forward to being with you all in 2021. Hi, Sycamore Creek. We're the bosses. And we've been watching online and can't wait get, to get back to see everyone and see the new building. And just wanted to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hi, Hello. we miss you. We miss serving with you all, so Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hi, everyone. I miss coming to church in person and I miss Kids Live. But I am so thankful that I'm able to come to church virtually every Sunday. And I'm thankful that Christy showed me around the new facility and that was wonderful to see. And uh, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Hey, Sycamore Creek. We miss you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hi, everybody. Kathy Bear. Just wanted to let you know I've been watching online behind the scenes just wanted to thank everyone who's making that happen uh, all of our team here on board uh, on site so I hope to see you soon God bless and Merry Christmas Happy birthday Jesus we hope you all have a wonderful Christmas Let's give it up for that video. Give it up for everybody watching online tonight. It's pretty awesome. So now we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, I have some families up here with me. We're going to play a game called Slay What? I need you guys to look at the people next to you and say, Slay What? Go ahead. OK, not bad, not bad. We'll get better. So I don't know if these families are really excited to be up here or if they were just scared of Christy emailing them and saying, hey, you want to play a game? And they were like, yeah, I guess I shouldn't say no. It's church. Let's do it. So um, we're going to laugh with them. We're going to laugh at them. We're going to cheer for them. We're going to do all those different types of things. So they feel welcome. They feel good, right? Does that sound good to you guys? Does that sound okay? All right. So here's how the game's going to work, all right? I'm going to read um, a famous Christmas song. I'm going to read a couple lyrics from that song. I'm going to give them the title. I'm going to give them everything they need to know. And then I'm going to stop at some point in the song. And as soon as I stop... The first person to buzz in and finish the lyric correctly is going to get a point, all right? Now, if both of them are completely wrong, we're going to laugh a lot, but I'm going to go to you guys as the audience, and we're just going to say whoever was the funniest, they're going to get a point, all right? So that's what we're going to do, but here's what's going to happen. So one at a time, they're going to come up to the buzzer table, all right? They're going to face you guys, and behind them, the lyrics are going to show up. So I don't need you guys don't to read them. I don't want you to say them out loud. And for you guys coming up here, don't peek. Because if you do, the other team's going to get a point. It's going to be embarrassing. So that's what we're going to do. All right? Any questions before we start? Everybody, everybody good? Let's go, Team Christy. All right. Let's yeah. go. Woo! Let's go. Right. Let's go. So whoever wants to come up first. Now, right. one more thing. One more thing. They're going to get progressively harder as they go. The oh, easiest yeah. one is going to be first. So if you'd rather send up somebody with a little bit less knowledge, that's fine. All right. You're going to... So, here we go. Yeah, give it up. Give it up. Here we go. Round number one. All right, this song, Christmas classic. 
all right? Written in 1941, it's been adapted, in, adapted into a children's book and a movie, all right? The title of the song is The Little Drummer Boy, right? You guys know it well. So here we go. Don't look at the screen behind you. Focus on these people. Here we go. As soon as I'm done, first person to buzz in, you get it. Our finest gifts we bring. Red team, what do we got? Uh, rump -a -pum -pum. There we go. One point over there. See? Super hey. easy. All right. You guys can go back to your seats, send up your next victim, I mean close. person. I'm not sure the red team was first. I don't know. It's pretty close. All right, get ready. All right. Get your hands Round two, you guys ready? Your Got your hands ready? All right. Yeah. This song was written in 1984. It's been redone and re-recorded in many different styles and fashions, and it's based around the perspective of Jesus' mother. Any guesses in the crowd? Mary, did you know? All right, here we go. The lyric is, did you know? That your baby boy has come to make you new. That this child that you... Yes! Delivered will soon deliver you. Oh, give it up. Yeah. All right. One to one. Send up your next person. Round number three. Right. Here we go. Let's can do this. Get your hands All right. Get your hands ready you on the buzzer. Get your hands song was written in 1994. All right. Believe it or not, this is still the number one Christmas song of all time, happens every year, gets voted as the most popular. All right, any guesses? Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. All right, here we go. <laughs> the lyric is, okay. I won't make a list and send it to the North Pole of Fort St. Nick. I won't even stay awake to <laughs> see jolly old St. Nick. No. no. Any guesses over here? You gotta give me something. Let's Any guess at all. Because if you can make them laugh, make you might get the point. Funny. Have a holy, jolly Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna go to you guys. All right, we need applause. Let's go applause for Blue Team on this side for Owen. All right, not bad. Oh, he's cute, but come on. What about Red Team over here? Any applause for that? Woo! Oh, so That's so close. so close. I'm gonna give it to Blue Team. Oh. All right, Blue Team gets that one. All right, so it's two to one. All right. Heading into the last round. If they tie it up, we do have a tiebreaker. Here we go. You got All right. This. Hands on the buzzers. Hands on the buzzers. Recorded in 1963. One of the most classic Christmas songs of all time. Written by Edward Pola and George Weil. I don't know who those guys are either. This is Wikipedia. So, um, Any guesses? Nope. Most wonderful time of the year. All right. Here's the lyric. It's the most wonderful time of the year with the kids jingle belling and... Everyone yelling, you'll be of good cheer. So close, so close. The one word it. off. So if you can get it, we'll give it to you. Can you read it again? It's the most wonderful time of the year with the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you nope. of good cheer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna go to you guys one more time. All right, they're both pretty close. Well, let's go. Blue team, You're applause. So close. So blue team. Close. Blue on. team. Okay. And let's go red team. She just missed a tiny little word. <laughs> so close again. All right, one more time. I need you guys to like really be excited about who you want to vote for. All right, right here. Yeah, right, anybody over here? Come on, this let's side. hear it. Right here. Anybody? All right, right here. Right here. Louder, 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 oh, louder, louder. I'm giving it to red team. Woo! So it's tied. So now we're going into our tiebreaker round. So I need you guys to pick your best, strongest best? competitor to come up. Oh. This one's tough. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Come on, baby. This one's hard. Come if back. they haven't been hard already. Come back. All right. Here we go. Ooh, you probably know this one from Charlie Brown Christmas. All right. This song was actually written for that yeah, movie. But what's funny about this song is pretty much everybody can sing the chorus, but nobody knows the verses. So it's, it's pretty perfect for this game. All right. Christmas time is here is the song. Here we go. Snowflakes in the air, carols everywhere, olden. It, I told so you it was tough. I told you this is not an easy one. I'll read it one more time. You gotta sing it, Nick. Yeah. I cannot sing it. That, <laughs> oh, not doing on. that. Snowflakes in the air, carols everywhere, olden. At this point, you just gotta make the audience laugh, I guess. Oh, olden? Just gotta make them laugh. Anything? All right, here we go. Old and golden days of old. Oh, very <laughs> impressive guess. Like Completely like wrong, but very works. impressive. All right, <laughs> Samuel, what do we got? All right, um, let's see. Wait, what was the last one? Olden. Last one. Olden, okay. Um, olden, um, <laughs> I 
I have, I really have no idea. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's funny. You don't have any idea. Yeah, he doesn't have any idea. Dino. He's going with Olden, I have no idea. All right. Yeah, so funny. we're going to vote one more time for you guys. All right. Let's go, Samuel. Olden, on, I have no idea. Samuel. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. And then Olden, Golden Days of Something. How about that? Woo! Anybody? Hey, we got rhyming going on. All rhyming's right. We're going to go with Red Team. Give it up for Red All Team. All right, Red Team. We have a little Woo! gift for them. We have a collection of gift cards and merch items and a whole bunch of different things that they can fight over as a family. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you guys for participating. <laughs> All right. Give it up for Slay What? All right. Woo! Let's stand and sing together. Joy to the world on a night like no other. Emmanuel, God is with us. Beggars in peace, let us go. For he is good. For he is good. For he is good. He was born to conquer the grave. That's right. Light of the world. The reason for Christmas. Let's sing it out. Come on. Oh yeah. Stars we have seen over day. Deserts and oceans, the darkness was deep, but never hopeless. Redemption came, come on, in his name.
Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for the privilege of being here tonight. And Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate Christmas. We can celebrate the coming of your son into this world. And Lord, we have been through a year of weariness. Lord, we're so, though, excited. We're joyful to be here this evening and worshiping you and celebrating your birth. And Lord, I thank you that we can celebrate you through song, through game, through fun. But Lord, we just now, we look forward to diving into your word and learning something maybe we've not thought of before when it comes to this idea of how we can rejoice, God, when you do something that changes our plans. Lord, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this church, for those who are with us in person, and those who are watching online. Be with us now as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. 
Again, thank you so much for being here, and Merry Christmas to each one of you. We're so excited you're here tonight, and I know for so many people, this has been a year of messed up plans. When I was looking through our calendar the other night, my wife and I were talking for a long time about all the things this year that we had planned that didn't happen. It's crazy how many things. We started off the year good, and everything was great. We took a trip in January, and then everything just changed. My son's baseball season got cut in half. Just a few weeks ago, my daughter got married, and the guest list got trimmed by about 90%. And we had so many things like our 30th anniversary. My wife and I had a big trip planned out of the country. We didn't get to do that. We just think about graduations that you missed. You think about parties, family events, concerts, sporting events, event after event after event canceled. And for the church, we opened up our brand new building And we didn't have what we would consider a grand opening where we could pack it out because of social distancing and all the concerns. And you haven't gotten together with your small group like you've used to. And there's so many things we can talk about this year where it's gotten canceled. Our plans have been changed. You know, so often when you think about so many of those Christmas movies that we love to watch, so many of those movies are about somebody, the main character usually who has some grand plan, and then something messes up their plans. If you think about some of their favorite movies, like Christmas Vacation, Clark Griswold, he wants to throw for his family a good old-fashioned family Christmas, right? That's his goal. Clark wants to do that more than anything. And what happens? Everything falls apart. Cousin Eddie shows up. That messes everything up. His boss doesn't give him his Christmas bonus like he normally does. What else happens? You know, he has all these lights that he puts on his house, and he plugs them in, and then they don't work. You think about that. You think about Home Alone, the McAllister family. What were they going to do? They were going to go to Paris for this vacation, and they got on the plane, and then they got there, and they arrived, and they realized, uh uh-oh, Kevin wasn't on the plane with them, and they left Kevin home alone, and it ruined their plans for a great vacation. You think about the Grinch. We all love the story of the Grinch. And what was the Grinch's plan? The the Grinch's plan was to take Christmas away from the people of Whoville because they were so annoyingly happy all the time. And so he thought, if I take away their presents, take away their decorations, take away all their Christmas food, then they would not have Christmas and they wouldn't be joyful anymore. And we know the story, of course. They were joyful anyway, ruined his plan. And then if you like that Christmas Santa Claus movie with Tim Allen playing the part. Man, you know how he had that night planned on Christmas Eve with his son, just a quiet Christmas Eve. And then, of course, Santa fell off his roof, and he had to put on the suit, and then he had to become Santa for the next year. Ruined his plan. And then there's this other movie, The Nativity. Maybe you've heard of it. And something happened in that that just ruined everybody's plan. There was King Herod who was planning on being king for a long time, and then all of a sudden he heard about this baby that was being born that was going to become the king. And he's like, that's going to mess up my plan. There was an innkeeper that had an inn, and it was full. And then all of a sudden this young girl comes along with her husband, who's, I mean, she's like 39 weeks pregnant, and she needs to deliver this child, and he has no room, so he puts her out in a barn. You have all these people like the shepherds in, in this movie who... We're out there just doing their usual, watching their sheep all night. And then all of a sudden, an angel and a host of angels appear to them with this big announcement. Totally changed their plans. You have the political leaders, the religious leaders. They had all their plans. And then this baby was born and changed everything. But more than any of those characters, there was Mary and Joseph. And when this baby came and the news of this baby came, it totally changed their plans. Because they were in a young, engaged couple. Just planning their wedding, planning their future, going to build a house, going to have little Mary and Joseph's. And all of a sudden, God says, no, i got a different plan for your life. And we know that that plan was to send Jesus into this world. And we know that's not a movie. We know that's the true Christmas story. And when you think about that, so often in our lives, we, we, we hear the Christmas story, but we don't think about how that that was the plan that God had all along. It was a surprise to everyone else except for God. God wasn't surprised. It was a change of plans, though, for everyone else in the story. But sometimes a change of plans is a good thing. As we look into the scripture tonight, Proverbs chapter 16, 25 says, You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. 
We have all kinds of plans that we lay out for ourselves. But God's plan is always the best. And sometimes it's exactly what we need in our lives. And so I'm going to read to you a little bit from Matthew chapter 1. And beginning with verse number 18, the Christmas story. We're going to get to Luke chapter 2 a little bit later. But Matthew chapter 1 begins in verse 18 saying this. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. It says they were pledged to be married. Now, back in those days, they didn't have engagements like we have today. And a lot of you that are married, you were engaged for a period first. Well, then, back in those days, they had what was called a betrothal. It was kind of like a young girl was pledged to be married to another man, young man. And there was an agreement between the families. And at the end of that period of betrothal, they would be married. Well, it was during that period of time that Mary became pregnant from God through the Holy Spirit. And it says during that time that before they came together, it was before they came together. We have kids in the crowd tonight, so we'll keep it very PG, and we'll just let you know that you understand what that means, right? So there they are in this situation, doing the right thing, and it says in verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. So because of this agreement that they had, this was much more than an engagement that we have today. People break off engagements all the time. But to break off a betrothal like they had back then, it was like getting a divorce. And so he was in his mind thinking, she has wronged me. The best way I can handle this is just to divorce her quietly. In verse 20, it says, After he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph... Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Now, when you have an angel appear to you, it's pretty good that the first thing the angel would say was, don't be afraid, because he needed to hear that. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what Mary's telling you. Don't be afraid that an angel's speaking to you. Don't be afraid of what I'm going to ask you to do, because God is in this. God is in what is happening in your life right now. Do not be afraid. There's going to be so many people that are going to say things about me and Mary and this child, and and it's going to be embarrassing publicly, and I'm going to get ridiculed by my family, by my friends. It's going to be a lot of judgmental people. Angel said, don't be afraid. Verse 21, the angel said, she'll give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. It just gets more and more magnificent. The story, like there's this angel speaking to me, telling me not to be afraid, and now this this baby that's inside of my fiancé is going to be named Jesus, which means he's going to save people from their sins? How in the world can this be? This doesn't make any sense. Then in verse 22, the Bible says here that all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Joseph was a Jewish man. He had been raised as a Jew, and he probably heard some of the Old Testament prophecies. So he probably knew that there was a prediction that a Messiah was going to come into the world. So that wasn't all brand new news to him. But this whole idea that it was going to come through his fiance, that he was going to be the stepdad of God's son, are you kidding me? This is crazy. In verse 24, Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. He was a man of integrity, a man that had a lot of faith, who obeyed God when it didn't make sense. And then it says in verse 25, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. He could have tried to cover it up. He could have tried to pretend like it was his son, but he did exactly what the angel told him to do. He followed God's plan. And and when I read that story and I think about Joseph, I think one word, courage. Courage. This guy had courage to do what God told him to do. God absolutely, radically changed his plan. And we think about Mary and Joseph, and we're talking about a miracle that's never happened. Like if something had happened before like this, he could be like, oh yeah, the virgin birth had happened 100 years ago, and then there was another one 500 years before that. Okay, so we're having another one of those. It never happened before. This was an incredible miracle. This news had never come to anyone else, and now this is a major change in their lives. A major change. Everything is changing. Have you ever had that happen to you? 
You ever had something happen in your life that radically changed everything? Maybe this year something has happened like that for you. I was thinking this week, about 13 years ago, it was 13 years ago in December, it was a Sunday afternoon, and my wife summoned me to come to our room because she needed to talk to me. I was like, okay, I had just gotten back from picking up my two oldest kids from a youth group activity, and I, I came up to the room, and she said, yeah, you need to hear what I got to say. This is important. And she starts talking and says, um, well, I don't know how to say this, but I'm pregnant. <laughs> and I, I was like, you're yeah, right. She goes, no. And she had the stick there to prove it. And I was like, <laughs> I started laughing, and I fell over on the bed laughing. That is not the reaction she was looking for. She really wanted a hug. Okay, so here's the story. Like, we had our third child already, and when we had our third child, the doctor said, you won't be able to have any more um, because of some physical things that Sherry had going on. So we were like, that's fine. We always thought two or three kids max, and we had our third. We were good. We are like, okay, that's fine. Nothing to worry about there. Now, eight years later, we're getting old. We think we're getting old, and then all of a sudden, there's this news out of the blue, out of nowhere, we're going to have a child. We were shocked. Our family was shocked. Our friends were shocked. It changed our life. I'm thinking about it a lot right now because my daughter just got married, and we would be empty nesters right now, but that's a long way off now. we got a 12-year-old, so we got a way to go before that happens. But it changed our lives. It was a change of plans. When I think about that, that is nothing compared to what happened to Mary and Joseph in the story. When Jesus was the, the Messiah coming through Mary and she had this put on her as a teenager, what happened to us doesn't compare. It's out of the blue. Nobody was expecting that. I think we all know that our plans don't always go the way we plan, right? We have plans all the time and they don't go and we wonder why. And sometimes bad things happen to us, right? I mean, like there have been bad things that have happened in your life, maybe this year, maybe in the last few years. And God is not the author of evil. So when anything bad happens, don't say God is trying to do something bad to you. You know why bad things happen to, the, to us? It's because of sin. Like sometimes bad things happen to me because of you. I'm not you particularly, but because of other people. And sometimes bad things happen in my life because of me. Sometimes it's our own stupidity that messes up our own plans that we have for our lives, and bad things happen. You know, sometimes we experience rough times in our lives because of what other people do. If you have a spouse and they cheat on you, that's going to cause a lot of pain and sorrow in your life. If you're a child and you go through your parents getting divorced, that's hard. If you've lost your job, your boss lets you go, that's hard. If the pandemic ruins your business, that's hard. I mean, we go through hard times and it's hard to explain, but God is not the author of evil. What we're talking about today is the fact that sometimes God, in his providence, decides to change the circumstances and mess up our plans because he has another idea in mind. And that's exactly what happened 2,000 plus years ago. And so just for a few moments, I want to share with you how we can rejoice over that. I want to give you three reasons to rejoice when God messes up our plans. When God comes in and he just messes up what you thought you were going to do, why should we be happy about that? Why should we rejoice in that? I want to give you three reasons. Here's the first one. God desires to have our attention. Think about this for a moment. The God of the universe wants to have a personal relationship with you and with me. I mean, sometimes we, we say that and we don't think about what it really means, that the God of the universe loves you so much, he wants you to know him personally the way he knows you. In the story, in Matthew chapter 1, it says, as Joseph considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. In Joseph's case, what God was doing in changing Joseph's plan was so fantastic, it was so unbelievable, that God had to use a supernatural means to communicate with Joseph. Like, if you're Joseph, there's no way you're going to believe what Mary said unless God did something like send an angel. The angel came and said, hey, this is what's going to happen. The same thing that he told Mary in Luke chapter 1, he tells Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, and he says, this child that you're going to parent is going to like split time. There's going to be B.C. and A.D. This is going to be the savior of the world that you're going to raise. This is huge. And God wanted to communicate 
to Joseph that he had a purpose, that he had a plan for his life. Here's the thing about you and I. We don't need an angel to come speak to us in order for us to commune with God, in order for us to have a relationship with God. This book, the Bible, is God's word to us, and when we read it, God speaks to us. If we live our lives in communication with God, in prayer, in reading his word, you know what God will do? He'll give you impressions in your mind and in your heart, and sometimes you'll have a thought and an idea, and like it's a really good idea. You know where that comes from? It comes from God. God speaks to us. God communicates with us. Here's the problem for so many of us. You know what we do? We treat God like that friend that we have, you know, on your phone. They have your number, and when they text you, you leave it as unread because you don't want to respond to them because if you respond to them, then they're going to respond right back, and you don't really want to have a conversation. Or when they call, you let it go to voicemail, and you don't listen to the voicemail until you really want to have to deal with it. Or when they email you, you leave it as unread. Why? Because you don't want to respond. We do that to God. Like God is communicating with us and we put the block on God. You know why? I think we're afraid of what he's going to tell us that he wants us to do. And we don't want to obey what he's told us to do. And if I can just ignore what God is saying, listen, what God says is what it says in Psalm 81. This is David writing down the words of God. Oh, that my people would listen to me. God wants to get your attention. Why? Because he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to know you better. You know, God wants to help you to avoid pain in your life. He wants to help you avoid destruction in your life. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, says in Proverbs that there's a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. So often the plans we have are not good. We think they're good. I don't know if you've ever done this. I know I have. I'm not going to reveal all the stupid things I've done, but... We've all had times probably where we had something we thought was a surefire plan. This was going to work. We like this. It was maybe a business scheme or something that we thought was, there's no way this is going to fail. And yet it ended up in an unmitigated failure. We've all done that. We've all had things where we thought this was a great plan. But you know what? God, he sees around the corner. God knows what's coming. He knows the roadblocks. He knows the detours. He knows the problems. And if you'll listen to God, if you'll have a relationship with him, if you'll talk to him and you'll read his word, he'll show you things that you've never seen before in your life, and he desires your attention. I think all of us can rejoice when God messes up our plans, because what that is doing is God saying, hey, listen to me. Hey, I want to know you better. Hey, I want you to know me better. I want a relationship with you. The God of the universe wants a personal relationship with you. That should make you rejoice. Here's number two. When God messes up your plans, it's because he wants to reveal a better plan for your life, a better plan. We have a plan, and it might be a good plan, but God says, I want to take your plan, and I want to make it better. In verse 18, it says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. What a purpose God had for Mary. What an incredible purpose God had for Joseph. Do you know every single person that is born, every single person that is alive, every person in this room, every person watching online, God has a purpose for your life. God has a plan for your life. And you're uniquely made by God to fulfill that plan here on the earth. And God's plan is better than your plan, better than anything you can dream of. And for Mary and Joseph, they had a plan just like any couple. They just wanted to be a normal couple. They wanted to get married. They wanted to build a home. He was a carpenter. They wanted to have kids, you know, just a normal life. But God had a better plan for their life. And when you start to understand God's plan, you understand a few things about it. One thing is that God's plan is always bigger than our plan. Sometimes we think really small about what God could do through us. For Mary and Joseph, man, God had a much bigger plan. They were just like, like I said, just going to settle down, have a nice, happy family. And God says, no. I want to bless the whole world through you. What would God do or what could God do through you if you were totally committed to his plan for your life? If you said, you know what, I have a plan, but I want God's plan for my life. If you said, God, I am totally available to you. Do whatever you want with me. What could God do through you? God wants to reveal a better plan. We should rejoice because God's plan's bigger. I also need to tell you something. 
God's plan is also a little bit more challenging than your plan. I think we all admit it's human nature to look for the easy way. How can I kind of slide through and get the, get, take the course of least resistance? We're all about that, right? I mean, like, I, I think every one of us, there's a point where, like, how do I make my life easier? How can I get to retirement sooner? How can I get to the end of my day where I can prop my feet up in my recliner and watch TV? I just, you know, like, I want comfort in my life. And when we understand God's plan for us, God says, I'm not going to just make it easy for you. You know what God's more interested in? He's more interested in our character than he is in our comfort. We're, we're all about comfort, but God's about character. And God wants us to mature, to grow up, to be people of integrity. And it's going to take sometimes going through problems and challenges in our lives. Do you think it was easy when Joseph said, okay, God, let's go with your plan. I'm in. I'm in. Whatever you want, I'm in. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for Mary. You think about her, a teenage girl. I'm going to be an unwed mother? Okay. Imagine the gossip. Who's going to believe me? I mean, i got to go and talk to my parents and tell them that God put this baby inside of me. I mean, there was no story about an angel appearing to Mary's parents. How do you think Joseph's parents felt about Mary at this point? How do you think her friends felt about her? It wasn't going to be easy. And then she's this teenage girl, and then there's this census. And they got to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. You know how far that was? 90 miles. You're like, yeah, I could get there in an hour and a half. Not on a donkey, you can't. That's what they had to do. It was probably a week of traveling, 38, 39 weeks pregnant on a donkey. And then they get there to Bethlehem, and her water breaks, and she's got to deliver this child. And she doesn't have her mom or grandma or aunt or a friend. There's no midwife, there's no doctor, there's no hotel, there's no hospital. They're in a barn with, you know, Joseph, that's it, and the animals, delivering her firstborn son. So following God's plan is better, but it can be more challenging. But it's worth it. It's always worth it. God's plan is always more rewarding. I'm sure Joseph said to God a hundred times, why, how, what, this doesn't make sense. But God's plan is so rewarding. And one of the things that, that you'll find out in your life is when you cooperate with God, when God is trying to get your attention and direct you on a path, when you cooperate with God, your level of significance in this world, your level of satisfaction, it just goes higher and higher. When you run from God, not so much. When you find your purpose and your niche in life, what God has for you, there's something so fulfilling about that. You weren't put on this earth to just take up space and breathe air. You're, you're here for a reason. And the Bible teaches us over and over and over that our life on this earth is preparation for eternity. When you think about eternity, how long eternity is forever, and our life, lifespan average between 60 and 90 years, somewhere in there, it's just a blip. And what we should be doing during our years is being in that mode of how do I make an impact that lasts? How do I prepare for eternity? You get to know God. You get to know your purpose. You use your gifts and abilities to influence other people. Imagine one day when you're dead and you're standing before God and he asks you a couple questions. Just imagine this. You're standing before God and he asks you, what did you do with the Christmas gift that I gave you? What is the gift? Jesus. Jesus comes and he, he comes and he into this world as a baby and he grows up into a man and he gives his life on the cross so that we can have salvation. And God says, what did you do with that gift? You say, well, I believed in Jesus. Great. That's awesome. And then he'll ask you a follow-up question. What did you do then with all the gifts and the abilities and the talents and the skills that I gave you? What did you do that, with those things to, to bring more people to Jesus and to make more disciples of Jesus? What did you do with those things? Can you imagine standing there before God one day and said, well, I was going to do more, but I got myself in three fantasy football leagues, and it took up a lot of time. You know, my kids were in five different travel sports, so I had no time. You know, I had all these hobbies. I was working extra hours so I could retire early. I never got around to doing anything for the kingdom of God. It would be embarrassing to stand before God one day like that. It's so rewarding when you understand God's plan for your life. It doesn't mean God wants you to quit your job and just go into the mission field. It might. 
But what it means is God wants you to use your life right now where you are, where you're planted, to serve him and to figure out what his plan and his purpose is for your life. So tonight, we're talking about how we can rejoice when God messes up our plans. We can rejoice because God wants your attention. He wants a relationship with you. We can, we can rejoice because God's plan is better than your plan. And the third reason, the final reason, is because it's an opportunity for us to increase our faith. It's an opportunity. When God does something in your life that you weren't looking for and it's changing your course, something happens, it's an opportunity. I think this year has been an opportunity for us to increase our faith. I know I've had to increase my faith and trust God for things more than I ever have. In Matthew chapter 1, again, it says that Joseph was a good man. He did not want to disgrace Mary publicly, so he decided to break off the engagement quietly. And then the angel spoke to Joseph, and Joseph listened to the angel. And it says in verse 24 that Joseph woke up, and he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. Can you imagine the faith that it took for Joseph to do what he did? Would you have been able to do that? Every thing that happens in our life, every change that happens, every circumstance, every trial is an opportunity for us to grow in our faith. All Joseph could do was just trust God more. And sometimes we get the idea of faith wrong. We get the idea of trust wrong. We, we think in order to please God, in order to be right with God, I, there's certain like rules I got to follow. There's certain rituals I need to be a part of. There's regulations. There's religion that I need in my life. And the truth is, what it says in Hebrews 11.6 is always true. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The way that you and I can please God in our lives and be right with God is through faith. God wants you to learn to trust him more. And Christmas is this story of, of God changing the plans of so many people. But it was a good change of plans. As we wrap up 2020, some of you might feel a little discouraged because it was a tough year. And we've talked about it, you know. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you, maybe you lost a job. Maybe you've gone through some relationship breakup in your life. And I wish I could say, in eight or nine days, whenever the calendar flips to 2021, it's all going to be better, right? 2021, man, it's going to be perfect. I think all of us know it's not just going to happen like that. I'm looking forward to brighter days. I'm looking forward to another year. But the truth is, you know, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But we do know something. We know that no matter what, God loves us. God wants a relationship with every single one of us. We can take that to the bank. We can know that no matter what, God has a plan for our lives that is far superior than any plan we've ever had. God has a purpose for you on this earth, and God wants you to understand your purpose. And that is why, that is why we're celebrating Christmas, because God sent Jesus into this world so that we could have a Savior. And I want to wrap the message up by reading from Luke chapter 2. That familiar passage as Mary and Joseph make their way to Bethlehem and the time comes for her to deliver her son. Luke chapter 2, verse 6. It says, while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and she laid him in a manger because there was no lodging for them in the inn. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem. The Savior has been born. And you'll recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. The great news of Christmas is that a Savior has been born. The Savior has been born. And today, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter how many Christmas Eve services you've been to. It doesn't matter how long you've been attending this church or if this is your first time. What matters is that you have a personal relationship with the Savior of the world. The Savior of the world can be the Savior of your soul. When you put your faith and trust in him. 
And there's no better time than this moment right now to put your trust in the Savior. Would you bow your head with me? We're going to go to God in prayer. We're going to have a closing song in just a moment. But before we even get there, I want you to just take a moment. I want you to take a moment and think about maybe something that's on your heart right now. Maybe something that you brought in that's a burden. Maybe something that's kind of a remnant of 2020 that's a heavy heaviness on your heart. I want you to just let that go for a minute. Try to wipe that out of your mind and think about this one thing. What is my relationship with the Savior of the world? Jesus came into this world as a baby, grew up into a man, lived a perfect, sinless life, died on the cross to pay for your sins and mine. By believing in him, by putting our faith in him, we have eternal life. If you would like to this moment, at this moment, right now in this service, invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Savior. Christmas Eve 2020. You can do that right now. You can simply pray a prayer like this. Say, dear God, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus into this world to be my Savior. God, I confess my sin and ask you to forgive me and come into my life. Help me to live my life for you. Help me to find my purpose. And Lord, help me to live it out every day of my life. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, this private moment, time of commitment, with no one looking except for me, if you just prayed that prayer in your heart right now, you prayed it to God, and you truly meant that, would you do something kind of significant right now? Would you just raise your hand just for me to see it and then put it back down? Go ahead. Don't be afraid. It's been like seven or eight people. Anybody else tonight? Hey, everybody else that's sitting in the room, even with your heads bowed right now, would you give a hand to God and for those that are accepting Christ tonight? Just thank God for what he's doing in their lives. This is a significant moment in their lives right now. We want to encourage them. God, I thank you so much for those who are putting their faith in you tonight. Lord, it's been a tough year. But Lord, right now, in this moment, Lord, we rejoice in the fact that you want a personal relationship with every single one of us. And God, I thank you for those that are understanding that tonight, maybe in a way they never had before. Lord, we pray that you help each person here on that journey of faith, Lord, to become closer to you this Christmas. Lord, help us to trust you for what's coming in this next year. Lord, we're excited about what you're going to do in our lives and in our church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Man, it's been so good to be here tonight with you. This has been a great service. We're so thankful that you're part of our service tonight. I want to just share with you just a few things before the band closes us out. One is this Sunday, December 27th, no services. So don't show up. You'll be locked out of the building, sitting in the parking lot. So don't do that this Sunday. Family time, enjoy the time with your family. We want all of our volunteers that serve to have this weekend off as well. So uh, enjoy that. And then the following Sunday, January 3rd, we begin a brand new series called It's All in Your Head. We're going to be talking about our thoughts and our mind, how do we control those things. And so we're looking forward to that series beginning in January. Also, before you leave, don't forget, if you didn't get a family photo at one of our photo opportunities that we have out there in the foyer, we encourage you to go out there and do that before you leave tonight. But I hope you're ready to end the service with a bang because this final song is pretty cool. It's going to rock your socks off, right? You ready for this? Are you ready? Ready to go? All right, so we got to get on our feet. We got to get our hands going tonight. All right, you're going to want to clap along. This is going to be pretty cool. Here we go. Let's go. Here we go. Come on.